Hello, this is Mari with X-Dynamics. Today I'd like to take you a little bit deeper into the subject of fluid dynamics as it relates to airflow, lift, and the Evolve 2. Did you know that there are two theories that compete in defining the process of lift? Which one will you think describes the phenomenon more clearly? In this video, I'll dive into these two theories and describe how we at X-Dynamics use them for efficiency and flight. There are two ways in physics to describe the force lift. The first comes from Isaac Newton in 1687 in a book commonly named Principia. The second explanation comes from a Swiss mathematician, Daniel Bernoulli, from 1738 in his book, Hydrodynamica. What's interesting is that even today, there is no consensus as to which one fully describes the process. Both are considered incomplete, and it's only recently that aerodynamicists have started to unravel and try to more succinctly define the force of lift, but still, there's no agreement to its definition. Let's start with Newton. Newton's third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Let's visualize this. Air has mass. While moving forward, an airfoil will push the air underneath it down. The air, in turn, will push upward, resulting in an equal and opposite reaction. With the proper angle of attack and forward momentum of the wing, the result is lift. Newton's theory holds true in any scenario, independent of the shape of the airfoil or whether or not it's upside down or even on its side. This is easy to experiment with if you've ever stuck your hand out of a car window and felt it being pushed up or down depending on the angle. This seems simple enough until we start to understand what Bernoulli's theory states. If Newton's theory centered on force, Bernoulli's theory could be described as dealing with fluid flow. Bernoulli's theory states that as the speed of a moving fluid, liquid or gas, increases, the pressure within the fluid decreases as its velocity increases. According to Bernoulli, lift is a result of the curved top surface of an airfoil. As air travels along that upper curved side, it moves faster than the air traveling on the underside of the wing. That faster speed of air on top creates lower pressure, creating the lift. There is a shortcoming in the explanation presented in Bernoulli's theory. If we have a curved surface atop the wing and the air is displaced and compressed when making contact, it stands to reason that this would intuitively create higher pressure, not lower. The flaw in Newton's theory is that it never describes the low pressure found at the top of the airfoil. It's only when the wing is at rest that the upper and lower pressure are the same. This leaves us with two theories that can accurately measure and calculate lift, but can't explain it. What's interesting is that when these two gentlemen were developing these ideas, there were no planes in the sky. That didn't happen for another 165 years, and this is still the best explanation we have. Today's scientific approaches to aircraft design are determined by computational fluid dynamic simulations, as well as equations that take in the full account of the actual viscosity of air. Although we still don't have a singular and satisfying physical quantitative explanation of lift, some recent attempts may have gotten us a bit closer. Bernoulli stated that the fast moving air atop the airfoil creates low pressure, but he didn't say why. Recent research has addressed this phenomenon. It's thought that a low pressure zone is created by a partial vacuum that comes into existence as the fast moving air quickly crests the curve of the upper wing, filling a void left by the fast moving air. This vacuum will strongly pull the air back down, almost completely filling up the void. Just enough vacuum remains as the airfoil moves through the air to keep a low pressure capsule above the wing. The unique way that the Evolve 2 uses the science of aerodynamics is the slight overlap in our props. This does two things. First, this overlap design allows us to use larger props, which gives us greater lift and control with minimal loss of efficiency. A larger diameter propeller blade allows for greater contact with the air, so less rotational energy is needed for lift. Larger propellers also tend to be more stable when hovering than smaller propellers, another increase in efficiency. Second, because we can slow the prop down due to its larger size, we reduce the propeller noise as well because we've reduced its blade tip speed while maintaining a given level of static thrust. These features help the Evolve 2 maintain a 30 minute flight time even with a larger Micro Four Thirds camera. The first inspiration of flight is hard to pinpoint, but like many technologies, nature is where those dreams may have first developed. Something you may have seen is the maple leaf seed pod as it detaches from high in a tree and twirls its way down to the ground. 
Now, not all seed pods are exactly the same size, but they are very similar. This one is made of two golden rectangles based on the Fibonacci sequence. Thank you very much for your time today, and we look forward to seeing you on our next feature video with the Evolve 2.